Hello everyone, this is uh, a video about uh, hypothesis testing using t distribution. Hello everyone, this is a video about hypothesis testing using t distribution. I have already uh, discussed about how do you use z distribution. Here I'm going to talk about the concept of t distribution. So if you see, there are two conditions in z-distribution which I have discussed. One is the sample is supposed to be large and the population uh, standard deviation is supposed to be known. Uh, here the conditions are a little different. Uh, there are two things. One is if the sample is a small, that means uh, sample size is small. That means if in a sample is under investigation is less than 30, then I use of the distribution and second is populations standard deviation is unknown so when these two two conditions meet then i use a t distribution to test the null hypothesis given by a <coughs> mathematician called gosset now uh, again if i see the um, six steps for uh, t distribution uh, for hypothesis testing using t distribution they are absolutely same that means we are going to process exactly same way how the t distribution is going to be used uh, but before that we need to understand where actually the difference appears when i am going to use the t distribution so uh, if you see, uh, you know, uh, in all six steps, when you are calculating a t-score, then uh, the formula for calculating a t-score remains absolutely same as it was in the z-score. It is actually x bar minus mu divided by, this is important, that means I'm going to use a sample standard deviation, divided by square root n. Now, you will be seeing two formulas. One is this, and the second you would be seeing is uh, x bar minus mu divided by s divided by square root n minus 1. What is the difference between them? Just understand this. What is smallest? Smallest is actually sample standard deviation. Now, how is small s is calculated? Um, if you recall the formula for standard deviation is actually square root uh, x minus x bar square of it and divided by the sample size now gossett actually said the person or the mathematician who introduced t distribution that using the concept of degrees of freedom the standard deviation is to be calculated by this formula where n minus 1 is known as degrees of freedom which is actually sample size minus 1 so look if s is calculated by using this formula right here so i'll, I'll, I'll uh, just mark it as a stroke and if i'm i'm going to mark it like hashtag so if s is calculated by using the formula which is in a stroke then i'm going to use this t formula if s is calculated the standard deviation of sample by using the formula which is Mark by hashtag that means if it is divided by n in that case i'm going to use this t formula at times it is given in the question if not then i would always recommend to go with this particular formula because you're not sure how the sample is calculated if it is given then you can use this particular formula so that's the difference between divided by dividing by square root and n by n minus one the actual difference comes up uh, how do you calculate the value of t alpha so i have already given the z alpha values at different levels of significance but t alpha is calculated by using a t table that means uh, t alpha is the value or critical value or uh, you know the significant reason on the curve t curve so it is calculated by using a, a t table so, okay, I just have to write t table. So, the t table is something of that sort. I'm just driving a rough, drawing a rough, rough sketch and I'm going to show you very soon how exactly it looks like. You have degrees of freedom listed here 1, 2, 3, and so on, and it goes up to 30. 
because we are dealing with the small sample. You see this thing here. And here you are uh, given with two tailed and one tailed after alpha value. So you have TT representing two tailed and OT representing one tailed. And then you have got some alpha values here. I mean, and some alpha values here. And what you see is you see your degrees of freedom related to the question. You see your what tail of type of test you are using, one tail or two tail. Then you see your alpha value, let's say 0 0.05 in uh, one tail here. And actually, this combination gives you a T alpha value. So let me let me show you how exactly T alpha can be seen. If you see this particular observation right here, we have degrees of freedom listed on left. If you see degrees of freedom listed on left and uh, alpha values are listed on the top. Now, okay, let me see. Pick up a different pen color here. Yeah. Okay, so you can see the degrees of freedom listed here and uh, alpha values one tailed, two tailed, and uh, these are the alpha values which are listed. So, what I am interested in, let's say, I am interested in, I am interested in finding a T alpha at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 with uh i would say let's say a two tail test a two tail test that's what i want to find out and the degrees of freedom are nine where my sample size is 10. the degrees of freedom are always like n minus one sample size minus one so how do I see that what is the critical value? That means T at 0 0.05 with 9 degrees of freedom. So if you see, I am going to see 9 degrees of freedom here uh, on the left. So again, let me pick a different pen color. Just a minute. Okay, I can see my dot here. So you have 9 degrees of freedom here. You see that I'm going to pick something from two tail test. I see five percent level of significance, and in this intersection, I see the T score is 2.262. And uh, if it is a two tail test, then it is going to be plus minus. If it is a one tail test, left tailed, then it is going to be negative, and if it is right tailed, then it is going to be only positive. So then I'm saying same value if it is a one tail test, one tail test, then uh, you see that how exactly one tail test for the same thing. So I'm repeating it. So this time again, I'm going to go with nine degrees of freedom, but this time I'll look into the one tail. And in one tail, if you see, this is exactly where the 5% level of significance is. And at the intersection, I've got something called 1.83. So if it is left tailed, test then i have my t alpha where alpha is 0 0.05 with 9 degrees of freedom is negative 1.833 and t at 5% level of significance 9 degrees of freedom is going to be plus 1.833 for a right tail test right tail test so that's how you see the t table that is that is one input let's let's see some question here and i'm writing here there is a machine designed to produce so let me change the pen color once again designed to produce insulating insulating washers for an electric devices of average thickness of 0 0.025 centimeter a random sample of 10 washers so you can see the sample is very small was to be found to have an average of 0 0.024 centimeter with a standard deviation of 0 0.002 centimeters test the deviation of mean from the population at five percent level of significance so what does it mean is the machine is producing washers at certain thickness and you cannot afford it to be more or less so and but if i see the sample i test test a 10 sample then yes there is a thickness which is found a little less but there is a standard deviation so is it like deviating much so uh step one 
as discussed earlier i'm going to pre produce a null hypothesis and that is going to be mu is equal to 0 0.025 because this is exactly what machine is uh, ought to do and in fact this is what it is designed to do so that is that is my null hypothesis i give my alternative hypothesis mu which is average thickness of the washer produced is not equal to 0 0.025 centimeters it's a two-tailed test clearly it's a two-tailed test it's a two-tailed test and that is going to give me a lot of help and uh, uh, step two is finding alpha value which is 0 0.05 in this particular case step three is identifying the test statistic which i'm going to use expert here step four is identifying critical reasons so at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and what are the degrees of freedom i have my sample size 10 so 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 you can see the sample size 10 here there are 10 washers which i'm using so at 9 degrees of freedom the t uh, alpha value or the critical value i would say is 0 0.05 at 9 degrees of freedom is uh, going to be uh it's a two-tailed test so I, I look into the table so I can get back here. It is actually going to come out to be plus two point plus minus two point two six. I can cross check it, right? So if I go with nine degrees of freedom right here and it's a one tail test, it is two point two six two. You can see it right here. And uh, the two tail test, sorry. And that is it. So what is my uh, rejection and uh, acceptance reasons are? It's pretty simple. Uh, so on a T curve, which is which looks like a normal curve, and if I see my reasons of rejection and acceptance, they are going to be plus two point between uh, plus two point two six and minus two point two six. So let us calculate step five. Calculate the T score We're using all the information which has been given x bar minus mu. I'm assuming that sample standard deviation is used by using non degrees of freedom so i'm using this particular value here i understand that x bar is given 0 0.024 centimeters in the question mu i already know it is 0 0.025 centimeters i also know my sample standard deviation which is 0 0.002 centimeters and uh, Yes, I know my sample size and is 10. So let me plug in the values and uh, that is going to be something like 0 0.024 minus 0 0.025 and that is going to be divided by 0 0.002 divided by square root of 10. Now do calculate this. I get an answer of negative 1.49 so i can now i'm going to compare my t value so if you see this is somewhere here that means in the region of non-rejection so therefore answer is do not reject x0 when i say do not reject x0 that means fair enough with this transition machine is working absolutely fine let me go ahead with another question where I am calculating something of that sort. The mean weekly weekly sales of a chocolate bar, which is given in this particular question. If you see the mean weekly sales of a chocolate bar in a candy store was 146.3 bars per store. So that's an average sales, right? Weekly sales after the advertisement campaign. The mean weekly sales uh, in 22 stores of typical week and increase to 153.7 so it has changed uh, with a short a standard deviation of 17.2 here was the advertisement campaign successful so what i would do is the, i would see that uh, post advertisement sales and pre advertisement sales are they significantly different from each other then uh, it's going to give me clarity whether this campaign was successful or not so null hypothesis here is that average sales 
of chocolate uh, bar in a candy store is uh, was less than or equal to 146.3 why i'm seeing that because i see where there is a significant increase in that or not okay i'm just going to clean it up and uh, you see my alternative hypothesis is that average sales went above 146.3 chocolate bars that's that set let's see alpha is 0 0.05 5 percent level of significance as standard i'm taking what is the sample statistic i'm going to use x bar what is t alpha at 0 0.05 and how many degrees of freedom if you see there are 22 stores of sample so n is 22 and sample size is 22 degrees of freedom is always n minus 1 so it is going to be 22 minus 1 and that is exactly 21 so t alpha value uh, with 21 degrees of freedom and 5 percent level of significance is actually 1.721 for a one tailed test it's a one tailed and if i say one tailed it is a right tailed test and you can see the initial video you can read my blog for having an idea about what right tailed and left tailed tests are so it's a right tailed test so i'm going to take it plus 1.721 okay let me spot on the graph what my region of rejection is so it's going to be 1.721 the shaded portion is going to be my region of rejection and uh, let's now calculate the t-score as step 5 in hypothesis testing i'm going to go with x bar minus mu i'll keep on assuming that standard deviation is calculated without using degrees of freedom so i put it as upon square root n minus 1 and uh, okay i know what x bar is so x bar is 153.7 you can see it right here i have already highlighted it you know the sample standard deviation is 17.2 you know the n minus 1 is 21 degrees of freedom also and you also know mu it is 146.3 let me quickly plug in the values 153.7 minus 146.3 divided by okay s which is 17.2 divided by square root of 21 i do a quick solution to it find the value is actually 1.97 if i compare 1.97 is falling in this region of rejection so my answer is reject h0 reject h0 means accept alternate when i accept alternate it means yes campaign was successful campaign was successful because uh success why because post campaign the sales are high and that's significantly different from uh, the previous one let's go to the next example see this example there is a sample of 26 bulbs gives a mean life of 990 hours so i have my sample value i have my average life and i also have with the standard deviation sample standard deviation of 20 hours but the manufacturer's claim is about that the bulbs are going to last for 100 thousand hours so i don't know whether you should check whether this claim is true or not at five percent level of significance let's start with the same composition once again do not fall out of the steps formulate null hypothesis the claim which is saying mu is thousand hours i'll take it let's say greater than equal to thousand hours if, if if it is like he's claiming that it is greater than one thousand hours and alternate is less than one thousand hours you can simply put hours here hours here then i'll call it 0 0.05 t at 0 0.05 how many degrees of freedom so i've got uh, 26 bulbs right here so my degrees of freedom if i calculate my degrees of freedom then they are 26 minus 1 
So you can write it here, degrees of freedom, 26 minus one, and that is exactly 25. So T value at alpha 0 0.05, 25 degrees of freedom is actually 1.708. So I can cross check it quickly when we go to it. So you can see I have got 25 degrees of freedom here and I keep on moving. It's a one tail test at 5% level of significance. As I see here, it is exactly 1.708. This is it. So it's yellow. You can focus on that. You can cross check it. Um, but it is 1.708. And since I'm using it as a left tailed test, Is definitely negative okay so what is what is going to be my region of rejection all of you know that it is negative 1.708 and that's the shaded reason in which i'm going to reject my null hypothesis this at the center is zero okay i'll make it a little better and clean it okay where's you know a little bit of that drawing so i'll try it now so this is my t curve okay so the right of the center is zero got minus 1.708 this shaded is going to be the region of projection step five let's start calculating t it is going to be x bar minus mu divided by sample i'm again assuming that sample standard deviation is not calculated using degrees of freedom. And I've got my x bar value here, which is 990 hours. You can see that. And is 26. And degrees of freedom, that is n minus 1, is equal to 25. I've recalculated it. And I've got sample standard deviation of 20 hours. It's also hours. It is also hours. Okay, I think I'm ready. Mu is one thousand hours. So let's calculate the t-score, x bar, which is nine ninety. Here minus one thousand hours. Here divided by s, which is twenty hours, divided by degrees of freedom. You see that and minus one, which is twenty five here. So I'm going to pick up twenty five straight away. Do a little arithmetic calculator to get it minus 2.5. That's the t score you've got, and you can see that it is way below. This. And what it tells reject h0. Reject h0 simply means the mean life of bulbs except alternate is actually less than 1000 hours. Okay, we crossed the first point. Let's move to the another. So I'm going to talk about comparison of means or called independent sample details. So what actually happens, let us suppose you have a class in which you have got male students, you've got female students, they're taking some test of statistics, they're scoring something, let's say 20, 25, or whatever, female students scoring something in that particular test. And my objective is to check whether the average scores of male or average score of female in the particular test are significantly different from each other so that's the kind of because male and female are two independent groups so it is exactly called as comparison of means independent from the t test and if you see how i calculate the t statistics here it's actually x1 bar minus x2 bar which is representing group one and group two uh, Averages x1 bar is average of group one and x2 bar is the average of group two divided by square root of standard deviation of first sample square divided by n1. So this could be the variance plus variance of sample two, which is standard deviation square divided by sample size of second. So I'm repeating the terminology x1 bar is mean of, uh, I'll write average of sample first sample first sample x2 bar if you see okay average of second sample s1 
square is variance of first sample and if you see s2 square is variance of second sample and if you see n1 is sample size first sample and uh, n2 is sample size of second sample so that's one formula where now the assumption here is assumption here is that variances of both groups are unequal so either you can assume it or you can calculate it and you can check whether the variance are equal or unequal what if the variances are equal so if the variances are equal in that case so i'm writing it in different color in case of equal variances the standard error changes so what you understand right this bottom is actually standard error in that case we use the concept of pooled standard i would say or pooled variance i would write pooled variance of both the samples in case of equal variances and that means if of both samples so if both samples have equal variances then i use a pooled sample pooled variance to calculate the standard error and that is given by something of that sort so standard error in that case would be calculated as square root of degrees of freedom for first sample multiplied by the variance plus degrees of freedom of second sample multiplied its variance and the overall degrees of freedom collective for both the samples what would it be t formula if i'm using the pooled variance it will be x1 bar minus x2 bar okay i'm going to put a star here and uh, divided by star s e so instead of using this denominator right here if i'm using a pooled variance then i'm going to use this s e at the bottom of the t formula so that's the difference between two different formulas let's go ahead and solve one particular example here a test in statistics is administered and uh, it is claimed that female students are better in statistics comparison to male students the sample of 11 male students and 13 female students is taken uh, from a test of total marks 30 it is found that average score of females is 19.84 and the uh, average with a standard deviation of 5.49 marks where uh, the average score of male students is 17.45 with an average score of uh, 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 standard deviation of 5.52 marks and what i want to calculate is i want to exactly uh, see whether at 5% level of significance all these two groups doing significantly different from each other so that is my objective to find out and i want to go with the same approach of hypothesis testing that means uh, all these six steps which are which we were doing earlier and uh, let's go ahead with this particular thing so the first thing is actually to formulate null and alternate hypothesis so if you see the null and alternate hypothesis here the h0 is simply going to be mu1 so i'll write mu m is equal to mu f so what is representing as males and females both are doing so there's no difference at all so mu m is equal to mu f and if i see the alternate hypothesis here so i hope you can figure it out the alternate hypothesis here simply is going to be that average marks scored by males are significantly different from average marks that are scored by females 
right so two significant uh, now let's let's go ahead and let's check it out now uh, second step is to find out alpha it's 0 0.05 also recall it's a two tailed test two tailed test here so that helps me in identifying the t score now i'm going to calculate t score at 0 0.05 what are the degrees of freedom? So there are two samples. One sample is of males having 11 students in it. Another sample is of females having 13 students in it. So you can see 13 females. And you can see, I have seen where the 11 males are. Yes, 11 males on the side. So uh, degrees of freedom here are 11 minus 1. So I'm going to write uh, degrees of freedom. OK, OK. That's going to write. Confuse you. So, okay, I'll rewrite it. So, degrees of freedom here are 11 minus 1, that is 10 for first sample. So, I'll write it df1. df2 is 13 minus 1, that is 12. And if I see the overall degrees of freedom, that will be sum of these two, that is equal to 22. If I see it at 22 degrees of freedom, 5% level of significance and that is actually 2.07 so plus minus 2.07 so I know my degrees of freedom I know my, my region of rejection and acceptance so I'm going to drop a curve here so that's a T, T curve and okay these are the two critical scores 2.07 with a negative sign 2.07 with a positive sign and these shaded reasons are going to be my rejection reasons. And we calculated T score here. And what I'm assuming is the variances are unequal. You can simply see it is going to be x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by square root of first variance divided by sample size plus second variance divided by sample size. All these values are given in the question so if you see x1 bar the average score of male students is 17.45 here so it is 17.45 and i want you to see the x2 bar which is average score of female students which is 19.84 you can pause the video see in the question and i've got first standard deviation here uh, of males is 5.52 marks so it's 5.52 marks standard deviation of females is actually 5.49 marks and i've got first sample size as 11 and second sample size as 13. let's plug the values in i'm going to get t is equal to 17.45 minus 19.84 that is to be divided by s1 square that means 5.52 square divided by 11 plus 5.49 square divided by 13. Once you solve it using a calculator you're going to get minus 1.060 and if you see this is called this is falling somewhere here that means do not reject it's zero that simply suggests me that if that uh, these these this data doesn't is not evident to prove that male and female are doing significantly different so null hypothesis is not rejected that means there is no significant difference in the performance all right we come to the last concept which is called comparison of means in paired sample data so what kind of questions we deal here in the paired sample t-test we deal with the type of problems where pre and post analysis is done that means probably there are people in one particular group they have been given some training on communication so their previous scores on communication are recorded then they have been given a six months training and their post training their communication scores are recorded and it's compared whether training was effective or not so we use a different uh, t calculation method here and we use a d bar 
square root n divided by s. And how s is defined? s is defined something of that sort, which is d square minus d bar square times n divided by n minus 1. I have to understand what d is. So let us suppose uh, there, there is an advertisement campaign and pre campaign some sales are recorded. So I write it sales pre campaign, sales post campaign. And uh, it's been done for a week, let's say, or, um, or probably there are four stores. Let's put it this way. These are the number of units sold, let's say. And uh, in these four stores, and then an advertisement or marketing campaign is run for a week. That's the marketing campaign. And after that, the sales are recorded actually. And this is the data which has been gathered. Now, I uh, these are four stores like store A, B, C, D. So, what is D? D is the difference between pre and post. So, I'm writing it PR, pre, and PO is post. So, D is this differentiation. What again exactly is going to come out? If you see 20 minus 27 is going to be negative 5, 25 minus 24 is going to be 1, 30 minus 32 is going to be negative 2, and 39 minus 41 is going to be negative 3. So that's that's D for you, this D, which is right here. And if I see what is D bar, so D bar is simply an average of these Ds. So we're going to calculate summation D divided by N. In this case, if you see what is the summation D, it's going to be minus, uh, if you see summation D here, sum of D, that is going to be minus 9, right? Minus 9. So it's going to be minus 9 divided by 4 is the value of D bar. And you understand what is D bar square when I square this entire term here, that is going to become summation D, uh, D bar square. And you understand what the d square terms are. So d square terms are going to be here 25 square of these values 1, 4, and 9. And what is going to be summation d square? How do you sum it up, right? So that's another thing. And uh, that, that, that is exactly sum of d square. And uh, all the concepts. So sum of d square is pretty simply going to be, uh, that is going to be <coughs> 39. So that's how you can plug in the values of D, I think. N is actually the sample size, whatever sample size has been used. So mm, let's, let's pick up a problem. Let us understand how exactly these things can be solved. So if you see it is given, there are candidates, five candidates. They have been given a training on communication or something. Their pre-training scores are given and their post-training scores are given. And I want to find out whether there is a significant difference between their scores or not. So, what my null hypothesis here is, null hypothesis says the difference, average difference of scores is zero. That means there is no difference at all. And uh, alternate is that it is not equal to zero. That means there is some change. Right. So, that is that is what I want to calculate. Null and alternate hypothesis. Alpha is 0 0.05. And D is the differentiation. Uh, that means difference of scores I'm going to use. How do you calculate degrees of freedom? Pretty simple. There are five people, so sample size is five. So at 0 0.05, four degrees of freedom because sample size is five students are here. And the degrees of freedom are going to be n minus one, that means five minus one, and we're going to give you four. And T alpha value, it's a two tailed test. So I'll write it two tailed. It's a two tailed test. And this t score is plus minus 4.6. You can go back and check in the table once again. So these are my reasons of rejection minus 4.6 and plus 4.6. Should you have the reasons of rejection? And me quickly calculate the things. So I have got before training scores. So I'll write it uh, before training scores and after training scores. What is this for? 110, 120, 123, and then I've got 142, and then I've got 125. After training scores are 120, 118, 125, 136, and 121.
then I'm going to calculate something called D, differentiating uh, difference of scores is definitely minus 10. This is negative 2, okay, this is 2, and that is going to be negative 2, negative 4, and 4. So I can calculate sum of D here, which is how much? Negative 10. Let's see what is the D square value? It's going to be 100. 10 times minus 10 square is 100, 2 square is 4, minus 2 square is 4, 4 square is 16, and 4 square is again 16. And I can calculate summation of D square here, which is going to be 140. Let me calculate D bar, which is going to be sum of D divided by N. So I have 5 on this side, minus 10 divided by N, which is 5, and that gives me a negative 2. Let me quickly calculate the T score now. So I know the T formula. It is going to be square root. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just clean it up once again. Okay, here we go. So what is going to be my T score? So if you see the D T formula, that is ordinarily D bar square root n divided by s and how do i calculate s s is sum of d square minus d bar square times n divided by n minus 1 let me calculate s first sum of d square sum of d square 140 minus d bar square so d bar is minus 2 and d bar square is going to be 4 so it's going to be 4 times 5 divided by n is 5 you can see the sample size is 5 here and minus 1 so 5 minus 1 is 4 you solve it out and what do you get is 5.477 so now what would be my t-score? That is going to be d bar and uh, sorry, okay, d bar square root n by s. So what is what, what is going to be by my uh, d bar here? That means the average. Average is minus 2 times square root n, which is 5 divided by 5.477. When I start solving it, I get something in negative and I get something like 0 0.816. You do the calculation and I solve it. And uh, if you see, this is falling right here at this center. The answer is do not reject. Let's see. That simply means training is not effective. Training has not created a significant impact. Thank you very much. The discussion on hypothesis testing using T-distribution is over.